Mayong Boontag, or Mayong Gabi'i. I don't know if it's morning or night when you're watching this, but I pray each one of you are doing well. Salamat, Pastor Greg, for inviting me to share this video, and I hope the youth are having a wonderful camp. It's so important for youth to come together and to learn about Jesus. It's important for all of us, too. And there's just something special about a large group of youth coming together to worship the Lord. We just had a large youth conference here in my hometown of Dothan, Alabama, in the United States of America. Every summer, we have a large youth conference. This year, over 800 youth came together from 28 different churches around the area. We even had some youth from the country of Mongolia, and it was wonderful having them with us as well. But this youth camp is called Wired, and the youth come together, <clears throat> excuse me, the youth come together to unite, serve, and disciple. And we are blessed at Love and Action to have a group of youth with us each time Wired comes together. And they are with us and they are serving the needy, the homeless here in our community. And it is just such a blessing to have the youth together and seeing them grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I pray that you're having a wonderful camp. And I just want to share a very short message. I won't take up much of your time. I want to share a short message to bring encouragement to you today. And if anyone is listening or watching and you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, I pray today is your day. The Word of God says today is the day of salvation. And I pray today is the day that you give your life to Jesus. I want to share a few verses very quickly with you uh, from the New Testament. <clears throat> Excuse me. First in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul writes, Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility consider one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. That's a very powerful verse and one that I felt like was a verse for me this year as a constant reminder that I need to count others before myself. You see, Jesus tells us not to live a selfish life. This life is really all about him, about living this life for Jesus, bringing glory to the Most High God. And too often we can get distracted. We have a real enemy named Satan, and he wants to distract us and try to make us not look at Jesus, make us not live for him. But we can't get caught up in that distraction. We need to stay focused on Jesus. And a great way of doing that is, of course, praying to him each, each and every day. The Apostle Paul says, pray always. So we need to be in an attitude of prayer. And by reading his word, the Bible, you, you could read the Bible from cover to cover for a hundred years straight and still not get everything that God has for us in there. It's so deep, it's so rich, and we need to be in his word daily, reading his word, letting him speak to us through his word, and through serving others. Because as we serve others, we take our eyes off of ourselves. We all have different needs. We all have different issues going on in our lives. But when we know that we serve the Most High God, that Jesus his one and only Son is our Savior and our Lord, then we know that whatever we are going through, He has us. He's with us. And He's going to help us get through those situations. So we need to serve others and show them His love. And by serving others, we're actually serving Jesus. And His love is going to flow through us into the hearts of others. And serving others looks different. For different people. Uh, we, we all know people that need some kind of help. Maybe it's your mom, it's your dad, your grandmother, your grandfather, an uncle or an aunt who maybe they're elderly and they could use help around their house. 
they could use help in um, cooking and you know you could serve them you, you could cook for them serve them a meal uh, that there's people who are sick and we can pray for them Jesus prayed for a lot of people he healed a lot of people but that was one way of serving those in need is praying for them while they are sick and believing for a miracle God still is a God of miracle and all miracles and always will be. So we, there's so many different ways we can serve people. Here in Dothan, Alabama, at Love and Action, we serve the homeless. We have a, a community of homeless people, probably above 200 people now. Um, it used to be 600, but praise God, it's gotten lower. But there's still a lot of people who live in poverty. And I know many times when people outside of the U.S., hear about people in the U.S. living in poverty, it's a surprise, but uh, we have a large population in the United States who live in poverty. Um, the U.S. is a very expensive place to live, and so with inflation going on all over the world, including right here, and many other different reasons, uh, many people live in poverty, and so we help them, we serve them, we pray for them, we serve meals, hot, hot meals to them. We provide groceries for them. And God provides it all so we can do that. And we have many believers who come together with us to serve and to serve together. And so that's one way that we serve others here in our hometown. Think about ways that you can serve. Get with your friends and talk about different ways you can serve others. And you may say, well, hey, I'm, I live in poverty you can still serve. Many people who serve with us live in poverty, but they understand that they need to serve others and they want to because they love Jesus. So no matter if we have or if we don't have, there are ways we can serve others. And the apostle Paul is telling us here in, in Philippians chapter two that we are to count others as more important than ourselves. And so think about that. Pray about that. Ask the Lord to show you ways that you can serve others. And don't, as Paul, the Apostle Paul says, don't merely look out for your own interests. You know, I, I'm not to look af, after my own interests. I'm to look after the interests of others. And the Apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit speaking through him, God is speaking to us through the Apostle Paul, and he's telling us to serve others. And so I just want to encourage you with that scripture out of Philippians chapter 2. And still in Philippians, if you have your Bible with you, flip over to the next chapter, Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. And the apostle Paul writes, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing knowledge Value. Let me start over. In view of the surpassing knowledge of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them mere rubbish so that I might gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, off of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. There's a whole lot there, and I'm not, I don't have time to unpack all of that. But basically what the Apostle Paul says, very briefly, is we're to count all things lost. This world has nothing that amounts to the value of what Jesus is. Jesus is our Lord. He's our Savior. He died for us. He rose again for us to give all who will believe eternal life. So anything that this world has, the Apostle Paul says, is merely rubbish, meaning it doesn't really matter because it's going to burn up. It's going to go away. You know, people have money, people have cars, people have homes, and it's all going to go away. And we're not to seek after those things first. We're to seek after Jesus, 
Seek, that, seek after his kingdom, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us that. To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And then things that we have need of, he'll take care of. Seek him first. He takes care of the birds of the air. So how much more are you valuable to him than, than birds? A whole lot more. He created you, each one of you, in his own image. The only thing in all creation created in God's image is you. Man and woman, boy and girl, we create in his image. So he values you. He wants to take care of you. And he will just trust him with anything that's going on in your life. Trust him. And don't get caught up in the things of this world. There's, again, as I mentioned earlier, there's so many distractions out there for us. But we got to stay focused on Jesus. And how do we do that? Again, we need to pray. We need to read his word. We need to serve others. That helps us stay focused. You know, when you're involved with a church, and I hope and pray all of you are involved in a church, it's that fellowship of believers. Just like you're doing this week in your camp, you're together. And as believers in Jesus, you can encourage one another. You pray for one another. You lift each other up. The world's going to put us down. Jesus is going to lift us up, and he uses the church to do that. The church is you and me, the body of Christ. Those who believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord, we're the church. And when we come together with others to worship him, it's very powerful, and we get to live life together. And so I want to encourage you, don't be distracted by things of this world. Focus on Jesus and know that anything that the world has for us it's going to be a distraction. Let's stay focused on Jesus and live for him. And then lastly, I just want to encourage you to anybody who's watching this video who does not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to do that today. And maybe many of you already have in this week, and I praise God if that's happened. But if there's anybody who hasn't made that decision yet, let me just share one quick story with you in closing. And it's from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 21 through 27. The Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 21 through 27. What is happening here is one of Jesus' best friend, Lazarus, had gotten sick and he died. And Jesus and his disciples arrived four days after Lazarus has died. And Lazarus' family, as you can imagine, are very sad, and they're crying, and they're upset because their brother had died, and Mary and Martha are his, brother, are his sisters. And they're telling Jesus, if you were here, you could have healed him, and he wouldn't have died. And that's where we're going to pick up in verse 21. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. It's a very profound statement Jesus makes right there in, in the Gospel of John. Jesus says, Martha, you don't understand. I'm not talking about the last day when all in Christ will will." will come together and be with me the, the, uh, on that day. They call it the day. He's saying, I am the resurrection. He has some I am statements. And for the, the Jews, I am means God. That goes all the way back to Moses. When Moses says, who should I tell them has sent me? And God tells them, tell them I am has sent you. <laughs> and so when he says, I am 
the resurrection. He's saying something very, very, very profound there. He's telling us that he is the resurrection and the life. We, we celebrate Easter Sunday. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday. But he's not talking about an event. He is telling her, I am the resurrection. Jesus, from that point, will go on to die on a cross, a very brutal death, for the sins of this entire world. But on the third day, he will rise again. And that's exactly what he did. And when he says, I am the resurrection, he is telling Martha and he's telling you and me and everybody that he has overcome death. He has transcended death. Death has no hold on him. And therefore, if we believe, he asked her, do you believe? And so that's what I'm asking you. Do you believe that Jesus has overcome death? He's defeated Satan and death and sin. And he offers salvation to the entire world so we too can transcend death. He says we'll never die. Now, he's not talking about physically. I'm 57 years old. I'm getting closer and closer to, to, to the day when this body will wear out. But you know what? I'm not going to die. My body will, but my spirit will go on to be with Jesus. I just had a very good friend of mine who just died last this past week. Very good brother in the Lord, but his, his body died. He was very sick, but his spirit didn't die. His spirit went on to be with Jesus in heaven. And that's the assurance that we can have, that if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the one who transcended death, the one who defeated death and Satan defeated sin, when he arose from that grave, then we will know that we will live forever with him. I faced death before, back in 2015. I almost died. But you know what? I was not scared because of Jesus. Because I knew if I died, I was going to go be with him. But he allowed me to live. And I think for one, one of those reasons is because he wanted you to hear this. That Jesus loves you. He died for you. He rose again for you. And if you have not placed your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do that today. I know Pastor Greg and all of my brothers and sisters, Mugga Ixun, there in Sindangan, will pray with you and will encourage you and disciple you. That means to teach you how to live for Jesus and be baptized in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us. So I want to end with that, with that invitation to give your life to Jesus. Be saved. You can be saved right now. Call on the name of Jesus. The word says, all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. And there's no other name that we can call on to be saved. So call on Jesus today. And for those of you who are believers, live for him. Serve others. And stay focused on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, again, I want to say thank you, Salamat, for allowing me to share this brief message with you today. And I would like to close this in prayer. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for my brothers and sisters, Maga Iksun, there in the Philippines, on that beautiful island of Mindanao. You know, God, Martha, and I love our brothers and sisters there so much. Lord, I pray for these young people as they're together learning about you. Oh, Father, I pray for encouragement for each one who is a believer that they will live for you all the days of their lives and they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, for anyone listening, anyone watching who does not have that relationship with you, I pray that right now, they will call on the name of Jesus, the name that's above all names, the only name that can save, and put their faith in you, Jesus, and be saved today, because you will forgive them. You will give them a new heart. They will be born again. The old will be gone. The new will come. So, Lord, I pray for them, and be with my brothers and sisters who are there 
teaching and encouraging and discipling. Lord, bless them. And I pray the day will come where Martha and I can go back to Mindanao and see all of our mug aches soon. As we do miss them and we love them. And I pray your blessings upon each and every one. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Salamat. Thank you again for allowing me to speak via video uh, to all of you and to all of my brothers and sisters there. Martha and I love you all so much. We miss you. And we pray that the day will come all in his time and when we're able to come back to Mindanao. Don't know when that will be, but we're praying that that will happen. But we love y'all. Keep on keeping on in the name of Jesus. Keep fighting that good fight of faith. Jesus is with you. And I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord calls his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless.